JCK Show 2009 wrapped up with a shorter schedule than past years, which got a thumbs up from most exhibitors. Perhaps this show will go down most for sharing survival stories during a time of economic uncertainty. My observations of the show were that business carried on, buying was conservative, but not just restricted to commercial goods or filler jewelry. Independent jewelers did snap up unique and new diamond designs. Take a look at one of our videos on diamonds.net featuring Catherine Jetter. A second example is a new patented cut called Magnificut, and Felix Chen explained that new technology. We uh, have uh, purchased the patent and actually partner with the inventor together to manufacture this product, which is Pattern with four stones. Actually, we can do as many six stones, eight stones, but at this moment we're launching four stones, which is a cut and putting assembled together with a single table. Instead of a traditional, you do an invisible setting with a four separate table. This is a single say, say table with all the facet line, everything on the crown facet is all matching. So that's a product. The technology is we, of course, we're using, everybody knows, the new green laser to, uh, we're marking, then cutting the rough, then all the way to the polishing, finishing. So the precision has to be within three microns in order to be really matching. And we sometimes really, even uh, we, to the precise of the one micron. So every facet, every line, it's all lined up. Otherwise, when we do the setting, it will not match and you also will not, uh, it will not set together and at this moment the way we set even you threw the ring on the floor on a hard floor or a wall it will not come apart so it's a very durable we do the all the tests too mainly one of the reason is you're right it's just the price compared with a single stone first it's only 60 some percent of the weight and second it's uh, the top four is the four pieces of uh, stone, so it's of course based on the diamond. You know, it's a way lower price, uh, even though it's a very high labor to do this precision labor. Plus, all these rings uh, doesn't matter the center stone or the side stone or the jewelers, or everyone with a microscope. So it's all precise. So it's a very high labor. But even with that, it could be uh, if you have a one carat, just use a one carat look. It could be about one third of the price or less, actually less. But if you get to two carat look, three carat look, it can be uh, down to say 20%, 15% of the same size look stone. So that's why it's very well perceived. AGTA show activity was quite strong actually for all the days the show was on. And we also had a chance to stop by and see the super tanzanite. This is the biggest tanzanite in the world. We are very happy to own the world's largest polished tanzanite. We are planning to sell this stone in the auction in the later part of the year. Doug Hucker explained what was behind the letter that AGTA and a number of other jewelry organizations sent to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton regarding the Burmese Jade Act of 2008. What we see is that the immediate impact is that those artisanal mining communities, tens of thousands of, of miners that are involved in the day-to-day -day activity of mining those rubies, many of which are not um, marketed through government control or channels, um, are, have been impacted dramatically. Um, artisanal mining in Burma is no different than artisanal mining communities throughout the world in that it is probably one of the most important pursuits that the population in these mining areas can pursue in order to maintain some kind of semblance of uh, a decent quality lifestyle, to educate their children, to feed their families. And while the imposition of these bans has had an immediate impact and, and negative impact on these people, it has not on the Burmese government, on the junta. 
they have sufficient sources, enormous resources of foreign investment capital coming from the ASEAN nations, coming from China, coming from India on other uh, uh, oil exploration, gas exploration, timber. These types of things are providing sufficient revenues. In fact, it's a growth. The uh, foreign investment in Burma has grown to where that this particular ban is really not going to impact. We don't see this creating change, but we see it creating a considerable amount of damage uh, to the people it was not intended to hurt, which is not unusual with sanctions. We understand that sanctions are put in place and sanctions can hurt. We're just of a point now where we believe it's only going to hurt the wrong people and it's not going to, to create any kind of impetus for democratic uh, change in Burma. Having said that, in the industry we understand that we're not experts on foreign relations, but we are much more in tune with what the impact of this ban is having. We have joined together with these associations, the International Colored Gemstone Association, the Indian Diamond Colored Stone Association, Canadian Jewelers, Hong Kong Jewelry Manufacturers Association, SIBJO, the World Jewelry Conference, AGTA, and others, to suggest that at least the State Department and Congress take a look at this and revisit the situation and see if they feel that the ban is having the effect that they hoped it would. And we suspect that uh, if they do review it carefully, uh, that may not be the case. Uh, we're not suggesting that the ban be stopped. We're suggesting that in light of uh, a new administration's rethinking of, of foreign relations around the globe, what is the most effective way, uh, effective way to engage uh, regimes like the Burma regime to see if they can affect democratic change, uh, that they would consider this as well. And maybe there's a better way for us to address this, or a better way for us to approach this. And that's what we're suggesting with this letter. And we hope that Congress uh, listens and, and, and takes a look. Stay tuned to diamonds.net. We will be posting all the videos from Arapaport Day's conference here in Las Vegas. And be sure to check diamonds.net for all the latest industry news.